Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be unboxing a brand new 21-inch iMac. And so this is the base model here, coming in at $1,300 US. A full disclosure, this isn't my iMac. I'm setting this up for a client, and as you can tell, it's already been unboxed. Not by me, but uh, we're just going to go through and I'm going to show you uh, why this is a little bit different than other boxes that I've seen in the past. Well, at least it's new to me. And so, as you can see here, starting off, it's kind of a little tapered, right? Kind of a little uh, thinner up on top than it is at the bottom on the base here. And that's, I guess, to kind of point out the fact that it's so super thin, as you can see here by the edge. And we'll take a look at it, uh, what it looks like. And so, <clears throat> what this thing comes with, with the base model, is a 21-inch screen, 21.5 exactly and uh, 16 by 9 widescreen with a 1920 by 1080 and also has 2.7 gigahertz quad core core i5 uh, CPU with 6 megabytes of L3 cache it also turbo boosts up to 3.2 gigahertz there is 8 gigs of RAM 1 terabyte hard drive and NVIDIA GeForce 640M by the way the RAM is uh, 2 sticks of 4 gigs and then the 1 terabyte hard drive is 5400 RPM. So it's a uh, 640M graphics. That's a uh, mobile graphics by Nvidia with uh, 500, uh, 512 megabytes of memory. Not a whole lot. Uh, HD camera, couple of Thunderbolt ports, uh, SD card slot, gigabit Ethernet, built-in speakers, dual microphones. We'll take a look at that. And then there's also uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0, wireless keyboard and wireless Magic Mouse. And then it comes with uh, Mac OS X and iLife, and it meets Energy Star requirements. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to be opening this up. And aside from being able to open it up on the top here and uh, removing everything out from the top, you can actually also slide open this front cover here. Ta -da! Right? So that's kind of different. That's kind of new kind of a little bit of a frustration free packaging so to speak before when you had to pull everything up it was kind of difficult getting your hands inside and getting everything straight up now you can open up this front here and then it's going to be easier and so up at the top here there's the keyboard and uh, the uh, owner owner already uh, took out the uh, magic mouse so I'm I apologize for that I won't be able to show you the uh, magic mouse which is a pretty cool mouse if you haven't seen it um, they, uh, it's all glass and it has a touch, uh, sensitive top there on the glass. Anyways, here's a wireless keyboard. It's a very small keyboard. There's no number pad or anything like that. It's Bluetooth. It takes a couple of batteries in there. There's the on button. And then there's also, uh, this little pamphlet here where it's actually a cleaning cloth, a little cleaning cloth and uh, a little bit of information about the iMac, uh, information guide here right and then a little cleaning cloth there right we'll set that aside for now we're just going to go ahead and lift the top here and uh, normally there would have been this uh anti-static kind of sheet looking thing uh, covering this but uh, the owner already took that off so i'm just i'm not going to really show you that and then uh there's these two pieces here you can either lift up this whole thing or you can kind of just slide out everything right and slide everything out and uh, makes it real easy to uh, take out and it's really light surprisingly a lot lighter than the previous generations and so you can just go ahead and slide this out this way and you can slide that out that way and there we have it right All right, so now that we got it out of the box, we can take a look at the sleek and thin profile design here. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a bulge in the back. That's where all the components are. And it's mostly just like a laptop or MacBook Pro components that's uh, in the back there. Nonetheless, it's thin, sleek, super light. And uh, if you look at it at an angle, it looks bigger than what it actually is. If you look at it right on its edge there, you'll see that it's still a very, very thin profile, and uh, this does tilt. This is the uh, maximum range of the tilt that it can do here, right? So that's about it. 
and uh, looking at our connectivity we have the headphone jack SD memory card slot four USB ports here a couple of Thunderbolt ports and this is for this display out as well as high-speed data connectivity and then our gigabit Ethernet LAN there and then a ventilation port here and then the power cord adapter a plug and then a Kensington lock which is pretty nice uh, especially if you're going to be putting this out somewhere you're going to want to have it locked down before they would never had this uh, Kensington lock here and you probably had to secure it by putting some cable around uh, the back here and it just kind of looks doesn't look good so uh, they've added that Kensington lock there and if we take a look at the power cord adapter you'll notice it's got some design aspects to it it's uh, angled there so that when you plug it in in the back here that the cord will come straight out right and it comes straight out and it relieves tension or alleviates pressure on the edge there on the corner there so that it doesn't break just some design aspects uh, going into making it last longer which is pretty nice and of course the uh, matte finish fancy thick uh, power cord here a lot fancier than most power cords and that just kind of goes into more of the design aspects of it then uh, on the back here we have a tiny little microphone and uh, I'm assuming that this is for noise canceling ambient noise for the main microphone that's on the top here uh, for picking up your voice and everything like that and then we have the uh, power button here which is flush on there right and then on the front we have our front facing camera and uh, you probably can't see it on the camera but there's a bezel on the screen here so this whole area here this is not 21 inches it's actually about this much this far into it is a bezel here as well as on the top and as well as on the bottom right and uh, you'll see it as soon as I turn it on and run some uh, benchmarks which is what I'm about to do now and so this is the exterior design of the iMac. All right, so we just booted up our machine here and from a cold boot, it took about less than a minute, approximately 45 seconds to boot up, which is a pretty good fast boot time. And so we're ready to run our benchmarks. And the first one we're going to run is Geekbench here. And let me go ahead and zoom in for you. So we take a look at the model number here, iMac 13 comma one. And we have the Core i5 3, 3330S CPU running at 2.7 gigahertz, 8 gigs, 1600 um, megahertz, I almost call it RPMs. And uh, we have uh, Mac OS X 10.8.2, which is the latest build. 32-bit uh, we're going to have to run uh, because uh, this is a trial version and so I don't have the 64-bit. Um, so uh, we'll just let this finish and we're going to check out our score. All right, so that took about a minute or so, and our score was 8,284 here. A lot of data, and I'm not really going to bore you with all of this info here. You can probably look it up on other sources, uh, or maybe I might be able to uh, post this as a link, possibly. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I have to create a sign-in, I guess. Uh, but on to our next test here that we're going to run. We are going to run Cinebench. And so let me go ahead and zoom out there. And uh, let's take a look actually what we're going to run. We can run the OpenGL one first and then we'll do the um, CPU score. And uh, again, this is uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT 640M OpenGL engine. Don't expect it to be blazingly fast uh, and amazing it is mobile graphics after all and so we'll just go ahead and look at the pretty animation uh, that they got going for us here and uh, we'll be back when this is done all right so for the score it was uh, 35 frames per second uh, give or take a few clicks and so Comparatively, what we have here, uh, apparently the uh, Quadro FX 5800 uh, only scores 10 frames higher. I don't really understand how this particular uh, system works in terms of scoring here, but that's what it is. And so then I'm going to run the CPU test now. And uh, this uh, 
It's going to take a few minutes and we'll come back when this is done. All right, and here we have the score of 4.45 points. I'm not sure, again, what how this is scored, but uh, comparatively uh, scored to older generations of CPUs here, desktop CPUs. Keep in mind, this is more like a mobile CPU here. And so uh, comparing it to desktop CPUs here, uh, these are a couple of generations older, the 960 and the 860, and it uh, is a little bit behind here. Uh, but the main reason why I actually wanted to benchmark this is because I want to see what a comparable price Hackintosh is going to uh, score against this uh, particular iMac here if I were to build a Hackintosh uh, for the same price or maybe even a little bit less. How much of a... Uh, uh, score will I get with these benchmarks and uh, if the performance is going to be better I kind of think it is going to be better, but we'll have to wait and see uh, Stay tuned. Please subscribe uh, comment thumbs up thumbs down whatever all that jazz and uh, Stay tuned for the uh, Hackintosh videos. I'll be building uh, soon as well as many other systems that I'll be building soon Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later